Thanks for joining us for this KRQE.com webcast. I'm Alex Goldsmith. Donald Trump's already fragile support in the Republican Party and here in New Mexico starting to unravel today after the nation hears a recording of him making lewd comments about women. I did try and she was married. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab him by the <laughs> I can do anything. The comments obtained by the Washington Post were caught during an off-camera conversation with Access Hollywood host Billy Bush in 2005. Trump apologized, saying the remarks don't reflect who he really is, but that recording appears to be the final straw for many Republicans. Just this afternoon, Governor Susana Martinez releasing a statement condemning those comments, calling them appalling and part of a pattern, saying she will not support Trump. She's not alone. I'm out. I, I can no longer endorse Donald Trump for president. RNC Chairman Reince Priebus weighed in, saying, quote, no woman should ever be described in these terms. Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan said he was, quote, sickened by the comments. This all comes the day before the second presidential debate. With the Trump campaign under fire and the November election just a month out, former New Mexico Governor Gary Johnson sees an opportunity. He's here rallying support in a state where he's actually pulled pretty well. News 13's Jeannie Nguyen is live at UNM. Jeannie. Alex, I spoke to a lot of supporters today who say they're disappointed with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, and they say they hope to see Gary Johnson pull through. I think if, if uh, Dosa Key wanted to uh, you know, finish with their marketing stretch, uh, campaign to get rid of the old guy, I think we've got the new world's most interesting man in Gary Johnson. As you can see, many people here didn't hide their support for former Governor Gary Johnson, but a lot of the conversation today was about the Republican candidate, Donald Trump. Johnson referred to lewd comments about women from 2005 that are sparking controversy. I think he has said 150 things that would disqualify anyone else from being president of the United States. But I think maybe this one does go over the top. Johnson even addressed some of his own mistakes, slip-ups around foreign policy, but says he doesn't feel like that disqualifies him from being a good presidential candidate. That was something he brought up multiple times during the rally. Now, not all of the people here today were in his camp, but they said they were interested in what he had to say. Alex, back to you. All right, Jeannie, thank you very much. A recent Albuquerque Journal poll shows Johnson in third place in the state, pulling it around 24 percent to Hillary Clinton's 35 percent and Trump's 31 percent. A pair of balloon fiesta visitors who passed on a hotel room got a rude awakening. According to a criminal complaint, a man and woman visiting from Oklahoma decided to stay in their car outside of the Yilin Medical Center near San Mateo and I-40. They claim Mark Bingham woke them up by tapping on the windshield with a gun. When the pair refused to get out, they say Bingham pointed it at them. They drove off and Bingham took off. He was later arrested. Bingham's now facing aggravated assault charges. A suspenseful morning at Balloon Fiesta as balloon crews and spectators waited to see if weather would foil their plans. They were in luck. Balloonists got the green flag around 8.30 and the mass ascension got underway, filling the cloudy gray sky with color, as you can see from this Sky News 13 video. At the park tonight, the Cannon Night Magic Glow set, scheduled to kick off at 6, followed by a laser light show and fireworks. Balloon Fiesta wraps up tomorrow with a farewell mass ascension set for 7 in the morning. Meanwhile, a pair of locals still in the running to win the America's Challenge gas balloon race. Four of the six balloons have landed, two still flying. At last check, Peter, Peter Cuneo and Barbara Fricke are over Kansas, headed towards Topeka. They're trailing a European team, Baisley Dawidziak and Christoph Zapart, who are between San Antonio and Corpus Christi, headed south. The winning team is the one who ends up furthest from Albuquerque. This morning's drizzles didn't stop folks from enjoying some outdoor family fun at the annual Apple, Apple and Pumpkin Fest. Wagner Farms in Corrales is hosting that event now in its third year. It features homemade food, including freshly roasted green chili, as well as live music and free hayride tours of the apple orchard. It's also an opportunity to harvest some of your own produce. We wanted people to have the experience of picking apples and picking a pumpkin from the pumpkin patch. The Apple Pumpkin Festival continues tomorrow. For details, just head on over to our KRQE News app. An Albuquerque park once plagued by garbage and broken glass has gotten a makeover. News 13 told you about the problems at Santa Barbara Park at Broadway and Edith, which was littered with broken bottles and other debris, making it an unattractive place for people to bring their kids. At a ribbon cutting this afternoon, the city unveiled a revamped park, including a new playground and renovated basketball courts. 
City hopes those improvements bring more families out to enjoy that park. If you notice any APD officers looking more colorful than usual today, it's all for a good cause. APD officers are supporting the fight against breast cancer by wearing pink polo shirts on Saturdays through the month of October. For each polo the department bought, $10 was donated to the American Cancer Society. Chris Gelson joining us now, and what are we going to expect for the final day of Balloon Fiesta? Well, it's a tough go out there right now. You got word that the glow was canceled, and we are going to be in and out of the rain showers for tonight into tomorrow, so the rain could put a damper on things at Balloon Fiesta Park tomorrow morning for the farewell mass ascension. Today was a tough go. As we mentioned earlier, they did get the balloons, at least some of them, to go up around 830, and then the showers moved in and loud cracks of thunder heard across the metro, so it was a rainy day to start. Temperatures on the cool side out there, right around 60 degrees. So the balloon glow was canceled for tonight because of those strong winds, and then we could have showers tomorrow morning. Temperatures a little bit warmer to start tomorrow morning, dropping back into the lower 50s thanks to the clouds and the moisture that we have in place, kind of acting like a blanket, and that will keep our temperatures up as we head into the overnight hours. But you'll need the jacket and the rain gear tonight, especially around Santa Fe, seeing some pockets of light rain, pockets of moderate to heavy rain across the western half of the state. We'll be watching this band of showers later on tonight, potentially to move into the metro as we head into the latter portion of the evening hours. A wider view of what's going on, seeing the showers across northwestern New Mexico, all thanks to a weather system that is tracking through the area right now. So temperatures are almost 10 degrees cooler here in Albuquerque and Santa Fe this evening. So again, needing the jacket with those temperatures stuck in the 60s here, 50s and Santa Fe, 70s across the southern half of the state. We likely only managed the high temperature in the middle 60s this afternoon. So you can see off and on rain chances continuing after midnight and towards sunrise for tomorrow, right around that time that we'll get balloon fiesta started. So we'll hold on to the rain chances tomorrow by Monday for Columbus Day, drier air working in. Temperatures warming back up, back above average. It will be warmer than normal by Tuesday, and then we could see some changes by the end of the week as another front moves into the eastern half of the state. That front will crank up the breezes, drop our temperatures a bit, but it won't have much moisture to work with, if any at all, as we head into the day on Thursday. So here's a look at Superstorm Track for today. Seeing that chance for off and on showers throughout the day today. Hold on to that chance as we head into your Sunday. And then by Monday, drier air works in and we'll see more sunshine. So in Durango, Pagosa Springs, Cortez, looking at the 60s after starting out in the 30s and the 40s with a chance for some showers. We'll see this chance for some showers and thunderstorms continuing across the four corners. Temperatures still on the cool side. Middle to upper 60s, 70s do return, though, for Monday and Tuesday afternoon. Into the southwest, we'll continue with that chance for showers. Temperatures into the 70s. Warmer for Monday and Tuesday afternoon, then into the southeast. More rain chances for the second half of your weekend. Temperatures coming up a little bit back into the low to mid 70s, but by Tuesday, we're talking about highs into the upper 80s to near 90 degrees for Roswell. So we'll really warm things up for the middle of the week. Northeast looking at that chance for showers and thunderstorms, 60s and 70s. Warmer and drier for Monday and Tuesday in Las Vegas. Northern Mountains, chance for rain tonight. More rain chances for your Sunday. And then by Monday and Tuesday, seeing that sunshine, we could see some rain by Thursday with that front moving through by the end of the week. East Mountains, a chance for some showers and thunderstorms for today. Drier from Monday through Wednesday. Rain chances on the increase by Thursday with the front. And then by the metro, we're looking at the lower 70s. Chance for some showers this evening. We'll hold on to that chance for showers for tomorrow morning. So again, we'll have to watch it closely for the farewell mass ascension at Balloon Fiesta Park tomorrow. Of course, we'll have live coverage tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. But it was a great start to Balloon Fiesta. This weekend's a little rough. Yeah, a little bit rough for yeah. folks visiting in town. All right. Thank you very much, Chris. And thank you for watching News 13, this webcast. We'll see you tonight at 10.